there. My name is Kelly Dale, and I'm owner of Off the Beaded Path located in Forest City, North Carolina. For today's video, I'm going to teach you how to make this beautiful ring. I call it the Crown Jewels Ring. For the ring, you're going to need nine six millimeter bicones. Um, I've got a multicolored one that I've done. This one has vitriol in it. Today, I'm going to be using the turquoise double AB, so it can be any color. You're going to need 15 or 14 5 millimeter rondelles. Now, the rondelles that I'm going to be using are um, the silver rondelles that have the um, rhinestones in them. So, this one has the black. The ones I'm going to use for today's project actually have the uh, crystal clear. So, you're going to need 14 of those. You're going to need some 3 millimeter rounds, and these are optional. This is going to be for the actual ring band. You're going to need 24 inches of illusion cord because the top, you need it to be stiff, so you're going to need the illusion. You're going to need about 16 inches of the 0.5 millimeter stretch magic, and that is actually what I'm going to use for my ring band. Now, optional for that also is two big eye needles, one for each end. You're going to need eight size 11 seed beads, so this is a good project to use up a few of your extra seeds that you might have left. And um, that's all that you need for this project. So go ahead and get your materials together and we'll get started. All right, to start off, I have my illusion cord and it's 24 inches. If you want to, you can put a big eye needle onto each end. I find it just as easy to work with it as it is. But on one end, I'm gonna go ahead and put on four of my size 11 seed beads. And I'm gonna let those drop down onto the thread. Now onto one thread, I'm going to pick up a rondelle, a crystal, and a rondelle. And I'm going to zoom in, just try and zoom in a little bit more here for you. So, rondelle, 6 millimeter crystal, and rondelle. Now, I'm not going to let these drop down yet, and I'm going to take my other end of the thread and I'm going to stick it through the same three beads to cross opposite ways through it. So that when I do that, I'm going to hold both of my threads together and I'm going to pull down so that when I bring it down, my seeds sit on the outside of what I just added. Now what that is, is that is going to be this little part right here. This is the part that I actually thread through to start my band for the ring. So this is what you're doing right here. Now you're going to pick up a rondelle, a six, a rondelle, a six, and a rondelle. So you've got three rondelles and two sixes on this row. So one thread, you pick up the rondelle, the six, the rondelle, the six, and the rondelle. Now once you have those, I hold all of them, and I take the other thread, and I'm going to run back through those beads. And pull. And as you work on this ring, it's going to drive you insane because everything's going to kind of clamp up together. That's completely okay. Um, and the reason being is because when you actually go to put the ring band on, it will tighten, uh, it will uh, lay the way it's supposed to. But as you work on it, it's going to be kind of wonky. So don't worry about that part. Okay. The next row is the middle row, and it's going to have three crystals. So you're going to have a space, or a rondelle, a crystal a rondelle, a crystal, a rondelle, a crystal, and a rondelle. So you're going to have four rondelles and three crystals in the next row. So go ahead and on one thread, go ahead and put on your beads. And then, once you have all the beads loaded, we're going to take the other thread and we're going to thread it the opposite way through 
all of these beads that we just threaded on. So there's my lineup, and I'm going to take this strand here, and I'm going to go right through the beads we just added. And it's completely okay if you have to do these one bead at a time. That's not a problem. Biggest thing is you don't want to miss any as you are crossing through. Okay, and I just pulled it out. Great. There we go. Okay, so when you pull the thread this time, this is going to be the middle of your ring. Okay, so this is what you should have thus far. Now, we've worked up to the center, and now we're going to work to the other side. So, we're just going to repeat what we've just done. So, for the next row, you're going to pick up the rondelle, the crystal, the rondelle, the crystal, and the rondelle. So, you'll have three rondelles and two crystals on this row. So, go ahead and with one thread, pick up your beads. And then with the other hand, go ahead and run the thread through the beads you just added so that you're crossing opposite ways through the beads. So when you pull, that gives you your next row. And you see what I mean? You're just going to have one big, you're, it's going gonna, it's gonna to seem like it's a mess. It really is. But if you can put your finger down in there, you'll be able to see, you know, what you've got. And like I said, it's going to look like a mess until you put your, um, your final row on, until we actually get the, that final piece put in. So now for the last row, you're going to have a rondelle, a crystal, and a rondelle. So rondelle, crystal, and rondelle. And you're going to go ahead and take the other thread and cross back through those three beads and pull. Now for the last thing you're going to do, you're going to take one thread and you're going to pick up the last four seeds that you have. And let them drop all the way down. Now, before you actually tie this off, what we need to go ahead and do is we want to go ahead and get this like it, you know, it needs to be. So you're going to go ahead, and if you have to let it go, that's fine. But just lay out exactly like it should have been. So one... There we go. And if you can, you can also put your finger inside of it there so you can kind of see what you've been working on. But make sure everything's pulled nice and tight. Oh, that last one's giving me a problem today. Okay. So that's exactly what we want right there. Now, I've got my four seeds. I let them drop down. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take the two threads and I'm going to tie them together in a knot. Now, when you tie it, be careful not to get your beads, your seeds caught up inside the knot. And make sure that the four seeds are on the outside of your little beads here. Make sure there's none caught to the inside of your rondelles. And I'm going to put about two or three really good knots in here. You want to make sure it's good and secure. Now, once you actually have that part done, the ring top is essentially finished. So when you get it pulled, that's what you're going to have right there. Your seed should be at the end on each side. 
Now, what I do, if I have leftover illusion cord, I go ahead and take and I run it back through the beads and really reinforce. Just try and be careful not to go through the four seeds on each side too many times or you won't be able to get your um, stretch cord through to do the ring band. But if you want to, secure it. If not, it's completely okay because it's going to be really good and stiff. I didn't um, reinforce this top one and it is still super stiff. So I'm going to thread through a little bit with this illusion and then I'll show you how to put the band on. All right, once you've got the top finished, you're ready to actually do the band. Now, I went ahead and put a big eye needle onto each end of about a 16 inch piece of stretch cord. And what I'm gonna do is take one needle and I'm gonna run it through the four seed beads that are on one end of my ring base. Now, what I normally like to do is I normally like to go ahead and run it through the four that are on the end where I actually put the knot with the illusion cord so that way if anything happens I don't have to worry about trying to get the um, get the cord through with that knot there and you may have to use your flat nose pliers to pull gently through to get that through the size 11 seeds and go ahead and get your cord even and then you're ready to actually start making the ring band so what I've done is I'm going to use three millimeter just crystal AB glass beads to do the ring band with and I'm gonna pick one up onto each needle, just like this. Let those drop down. And then you pick up one on one needle and I pull it down off of the needle and then take the other needle and go through it the opposite way so that when you pull, that makes your first loop for the ring band. Now I'm gonna continue on and I'm gonna put one three millimeter onto each needle. I'm gonna let those drop down. And then I'm gonna put one bead onto one needle. I'm gonna pull it down onto the thread and then I'm gonna take the other needle and cross opposite ways. So that now that gives me two circles. And you'll want to continue until you've reached um, the desired length for the band. And be sure to finish off with one three millimeter onto each needle. So once you've reached the desired length, you're ready to go ahead and connect it to the other side. So I've got my three millimeter onto each cord, just like this. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to come to the other side here are my four seeds. So I'm going to take one side, so the side here, and I'm going to come straight through those four seeds just like this and pull. And again, you may have to use your flat nose pliers and pull gently to pull it through. And then I'm going to tie these two threads together. Now, when you tie it together, be careful not to get the three millimeter caught up inside of the knot. Okay? So you just want the knot. Now go ahead and put you a couple of more really good knots in there. I normally put about three double knots in there. And then once you have it pulled good and tight and you feel that it's secure, then you can go ahead and take a good pair of cutters, trim that thread, and then you have a brand new ring. And when you put it on, look how pretty that is. Oh, I just love it, I love it. Now, you can wear it on any finger. On mine, I have pretty large fingers, so on this finger here, you can see, um, you can see the cord right there. But wearing it on a normal finger, like this one here, you don't see that, so that's the good thing. But, um, like I said, you can do these in single colors, you can do these in multicolors, and um, you can find different colors of the rondelles, and it really adds some different things to your design. So, I hope you guys uh, enjoyed learning how to make the new Crown Jewels ring. Now, we will have kits for these on our Etsy site, which is listed right here below me, 
and we'll also have just the rondelles so if you want just you know enough rondelles to do the project we'll have those listed now it may take us a couple of days after you actually watch this video because um, I'm waiting on the shipment to come in but they will be listed on our site so if you need them we will definitely have those for you um, be sure and come back next week because I'm gonna do a tutorial that was requested on diagonal right angle weave there was a project in bead and button a couple of issues ago that was diagonal right angle weave and people were having a problem with it so i'm going to show you guys how to do that and in the meantime i'm going to try and get a hold of diane fitzgerald to see if she will allow me to um, do some projects out of her dimensional beadwork or dimensional peyote beadwork book so um if you get a chance to purchase that book it is fantastic and I'm really hoping that I can show you how to do some of the projects or some of the techniques from that book so just I'll try and keep you posted on that and one other thing I wanted to show you um, I know the shower part rings you know we have been having people have made tons of those and they're just having a blast with those well I got in a new uh, component this week and I'm gonna try and do a video within the next few weeks just to give you something that you can see to do with them but I actually got in their post earrings just like that and they have the shower part piece that goes with them so you can um, you can make a really fun post earring and the great part about these is they're not huge so you can actually if you want to make these say for like an eight nine or ten year old you know they don't need as big of a post so you can actually take and trim the post a little bit and make it for a younger person too but I'm going to try and come up with a couple of fun little um, projects for those. So that way you can see those. But we'll have those on our Etsy site too. So um, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I hope you have a wonderful week. And we'll see you again next week for another fun